So as I mentioned earlier, ANOVA and regression both involve linear models, so there are essentially two ways of describing the same thing. In this video, we're going to draw explicit connections between ANOVA and regression um, by revisiting a data set that we first analyzed with ANOVA, um, and we're going to come back and look at it this time with regression. So in this scenario, we ask, does a picture have any effect on college students' understanding of ambiguous prose? Students were randomly assigned to three groups. One saw a picture before reading a difficult passage of text, one saw the picture after reading the patch passage, and the third was not shown a picture at all. Um, and then the groups were tested on their comprehension. So when we analyzed this the first time, um, we just did analyze fit y by x, and we put comprehension as our response variable and group as our explanatory variable. And you can see in the little table here that when you have a categorical explanatory variable and a quantitative response, that fit y by x is going to give you a one-way ANOVA. So we've got several options here. Um, for now, I'm just going to look at the means and standard deviations because that'll be relevant for the um, regression. We can also go ahead and show the ANOVA table. We're going to compare um, the ANOVA table for regression. So the ANOVA table is just showing us that there is an association between group and comprehension. But if we wanted to do pairwise comparisons, we would do compare means. And for now, I'm just going to do t-test um, because that's going to be consistent with the test and regression. Okay, so I've copied the output that you need into the notes. So let's say that we wanted to analyze the same data, but with linear regression this time, so we're going to need to use indicator variables. So I've defined two indicator variables here, one for after and one for before. So x after is 1 if we're talking about the picture after group and 0 for everyone else. Um, x before is 1 for the before group zero for everyone else. Um, and notice that we only need two indicators here, and that's because none, the third group, is the baseline group. So if both of your other indicators were equal to zero, then you know we were talking about none. And you can see I've got my regression equation set up here. I've got an intercept, a slope for after, and a slope for before. So I want to give you a chance to think about what these coefficients would be, what the intercept and slope coefficients would be. And I'll give you a hint that you should first think about how to interpret them, right? What are those numbers actually referring to? Um, and then see if you can use the output from the one-way ANOVA um, to fill those in. I've also whited out the um, p-values over here. So using the order differences report, see if you can figure out what p-values um, would correspond to those slopes. Pause the video here. Take a few minutes to work on it. All right, so let's start with the intercept. Um, so the interpretation of the intercept is that it will be the predicted value of y when all of your x's are equal to zero. So what it means to have all of the x's equal to zero in this case is that we're talking about the baseline group, right? Because if all the indicators are equal to zero, then that would refer to the baseline. So what would our predicted value be for the baseline? We can just look up here at the means and see that for the none group, um, the average would be 3.368, that's the average comprehension score, um, so that would be our intercept. Then what about the slope for after? So this is the predicted change in y for a one unit increase in x. So in this case, a one unit increase in x means going from 0 to 1, going from the baseline group to the after group. So basically, we would be comparing the mean comprehension scores for the after group to the baseline group. So for after, the mean comprehension score was 3.211. And we'll look at the difference with none, which was 3.368. And we get a difference of negative 0.157. And if we look, that's actually given to us up here in the ordered differences report. Right, we're looking at the difference here. It's in the other order, none minus after. We did after minus none, um, but it is doing that number for us. And actually, I can see here that my rounding was off, so I'm going to go with theirs. Um, I'm going to do negative 0.158. So this is telling me that as I go from the baseline group none to after, that my predicted comprehension score is going down by 0.158. And then I can also use this p-value. 
So that's testing the difference between none and after, um, which is exactly the comparison that I'm making with the slope for after. Um, so the p-value here would be 0.9282. So not a significant difference whether you see the picture after or not at all. And then this one down here, group before, this one's going to be very similar, um, except that obviously instead of comparing the predicted value for the after group, you're doing it for the before group, but still comparing to the baseline of n. And in this case, the ordered differences output is actually subtracting in the right direction. It's doing before minus none. Um, so I'm just going to steal that number from there. So plus 1.5. 579 and I can also get my p-value from there so my p-value for the difference between before and none is 0 0.0015 um, so there is a significant difference whether you see the picture before reading the ambiguous prose or not at all sorry for the mistake with the output I had originally used two keys HSD instead of t-test which is why the p-values weren't consistent with what's in the regression table um, so just take a second make sure that you have the correct p-values in your notes and if we compare the analysis of variance table, this is the one for regression, this is the one for ANOVA, um, we can see that those are actually identical. And that sort of makes sense if you think about how we're defining SS groups and SS model. So the formula for SS groups, um, we would be looking at the group mean for each group and comparing that to the overall mean. Right, so we're looking to see how the group means vary around the overall mean. In other words, the between groups variability. So we would take each of those differences and square it and sum it all up. And that would be our SS groups. For SS model, it's going to be really similar, um, except here, instead of using the mean for each group, we're doing the predicted value, right? The predicted value of Y minus the average value of Y summing all of those, squaring those, and summing them up. And the reason that these are the same is what we just showed, that we can go back and forth between the group means and the predicted values. So it turns out that when your explanatory variable is categorical, like what we have here, that your group mean is just the same as your predicted value. So whether you get there through indicator variables or just directly by taking the mean for the group, those are the same value. So SS groups is going to be identical to SS model.